Hi everyone, welcome back to This Book Belongs To Pam. This is kind of a weird angle, I know. And I'm starting this vlog at a, at a weird time. It's now 12.38 in the morning on September 20th. And the reason I'm starting this vlog is because I want to be a little bit more spontaneous and just start vlogs. It doesn't have to be Monday. It doesn't have to be like morning for me to start a vlog. I, if I just want to start a vlog, I should. I'm trying to get better at this. I am reading this book called Defending Jacob. Um, I forget who the author is. But I found out about this book because I actually watched the Apple TV um, TV show adaptation first. Primarily because it stars Chris Evans and I'm currently in a very big Chris Evans moment right now. Be honest. Be honest. I don't know. I just really, for some reason... I just want to watch his entire like filmography and everything. Anyway, yeah, it's my kid right now, and let's see where is it. Oh, by the way, yes, I did borrow a card of Miss and Fury, but honestly, I'm not in the mood to read it, so I don't think I'll be able to read it. Here it is, defending. Oops, defending Jacob. It's by William Lande. I'm not sure if that's right. I really enjoyed the TV show, and. I think it's a really good like psychological thriller and I found out that it was actually a book first so I got really curious about how the TV show differs from the book and whether or not I would like the book or the TV show better. And usually I like the books more but I guess we'll find out in this vlog. I'm actually also planning on re-watching maybe a couple of the episodes from the TV show depending on which one I feel like watching after reading portions of the book and I guess I'll update you whether or not the show follows the book or if they took some creative liberties with it. I took a break from reading because I actually just want to like pump out this video. I've been editing this book haul for such a long time mostly because I got stuck in doing like a new intro and that kind of took over my time but now I finished doing the rough cut so I'm just gonna do another pass and make sure all the cuts are clean and everything and then maybe tomorrow I can add in all of the overlays and finally, finally post this video. I finished it. I'm finally exporting and I will hopefully upload this video tomorrow. I still have to work on the thumbnails though, so that's gonna be for tomorrow. Okay, I'm gonna go to sleep now because it's 2.20 in the morning, so good night. I did it. I published my first booktube video in such a long time um it's of course my book haul from the u.s and yeah it's up it's 11:54, which means it's time to have a little bit of lunch and i'm just so happy that i finally got this up so i will leave a link to this uh, video in the description <sighs> yes yes i feel so accomplished Fast train, life's going stringing just to catch a glance, ringing in everything I left behind to catch a glimpse of moment, picture stars and trees, a clear blue sky before they pass forgotten treasures, exit the corner of my eye. Life's just the same game, Monopoly shot, I'm here to say, but chalkboards and candy canes, they can all be erased, holding on to something, nothing in the end, but will I even gain? For the little things, the living hope, the forgotten dreams, you've got to try to catch that light. Don't let it rot from the bitter cavities of life. Grateful for what you have. Don't go somewhere else and don't look back. Stay and receive here, and you will have.
okay quick update i don't think i've done enough of this like face to face i feel like at this point all of my update videos are either super i always i always look super <laughs> crazy in my in my videos um yeah so i guess a quick update on defending jacob i'm currently at i think i'm like at page 200 yeah i'm at page 193 which is chapter 18 and honestly i'm really loving it this is 44 percent of the book i'm really loving it the style of writing is very straight to the point it's in first person um we are reading this through the pov of actually I wouldn't even say that it's the POV of um, Andrew Barber, which is the father of Jacob. It's really more like he is telling this story to us. It kind of feels like he is confiding in us what actually happened. Um, even though it's first person, it says they're like, I went to this place, I went to that place. But it feels like he's interacting with us. There were a couple of moments there where I felt like we were just chatting even though it's in first person view it's so hard for me to explain but yeah i really like the style it's very direct to the point it's not overly flowery um it's a good mix between like dialogue and narration <coughs> he usually has these pages of just dialogue um where he doesn't have the usual insert dialogue here and then he said this this and this and then she replied with this he, he doesn't have any of that he just has the dialogue but because the tone of voice of the different characters are so different uh comparing it to the tv show there hasn't been any big differences in terms of the the events the plot but i did notice that there were a lot of different and there were a lot of differences in the characters in terms of their gender their race they, they probably um they definitely made the tv show a lot more inclusive in terms of the characters that are um in the show because in the book a lot of the characters are male <laughs> so we have the male um like police officers we have the male attorneys but in the show they made those characters female it does make sense for a lot of the characters to be white because the setting is like a small suburb in massachusetts and massachusetts is a very white state so i kind of understood why the book had all of those white characters which makes me really appreciate the choices that they made in the um, TV series where they just updated that made it more inclusive that's the only difference that I've seen there's a couple of like history bits like backstory of Andrew Barber that's not really mentioned that much in the TV show but I think it was omitted mostly just to keep the pace like a little bit faster since it is a TV show versus a book so no big changes yet I know from reading about the story after I watch a TV show that there's, gonna, that there's going to be like a big change in the ending um, but I want to see how it's accomplished in the book first so so far I'm having a really good time reading it and I think I can finish this by tomorrow because actually I'm gonna be leaving on Sunday to go to the beach with my girlfriends so I want to be able to start a new book okay with that said i'm just gonna keep reading some more um also i think i mentioned i published my video last night so yeah i'm gonna link that in the description box yeah I'm read some more defending jacob so far so good it's looking like a good like four stars right now that's how what it feels like to me <laughs> yes yes what do you want Hmm? You wanna be in the reading block? <laughs> okay. Um, quick update. I haven't read much since the last update that I did. I actually only read about like thirty pages or so, but I'm updating because this is actually the first um big difference in terms of the plot between the TV show and the book. So in the I'm trying to think of how to do like say this without spoiling it but basically Andy Barber finds something out about his son 
So for the longest time, Andy Barber, which is the father of Jacob, he's convinced that his son is innocent. He doesn't for a second, he has never for a second doubted his son. He is all about defending his son, you know, defending Jacob. But um, he finds out this one information um, about his son that puts that first seed of doubt in his mind. So I think, I think in the TV show, it was done really well where the impact was really felt because of when they divulged this information and the way that um, Andy Barber, Chris Evans in the TV show sort of portrayed the seed of doubt being planted in his mind. So the way that it was done here in the book was a little more, I guess, less public because the way that he found out about it in the TV show was in a very very public setting um, but here in this in the book version it was a much more private affair so his sort of reaction to it was a lot more subdued a lot more personal a lot more inward which honestly thinking about the character of Andrew Barber it's very much within his um, personality to have this kind of reaction but they had to play it up for the TV show because this was a very sort of like this was a turning point in the story because like I said it was the first time that Andy sort of doubted his son um, so that's one of the first I guess that's the first major difference really uh, between the book and the TV show so yeah I thought I would just you know hop on here and talk about that and also there's a quote or like there's a section in here that I highlighted because it's like very true. Um, Andy in here was talking about how things are getting hard financially to defend Jacob. He says, This is an aspect of crime stories I never fully appreciated until I became one. It is so ruinously expensive to mount a defense that, innocent or guilty, the accusation is itself a devastating punishment. Every defendant pays a price. Just, just, you know, facts. <laughs> it's just facts. My dog, Chucky, says hi. Hi, big boy. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I'm gonna go back to reading now. Andrew Stephen Barber. Good morning. Um, I'm starting my day very early today. It's only 5.14 in the morning because I have a report that I need to do for work that's very tedious and I just want to get a head start on it. So while I'm doing that, I'm actually going to be um, watching, watching Defending Jacob. I've watched the entire show so I'm just, just going to play it um, while I work just to keep me company <laughs> also I showered and wet my hair because it's a great way to wake myself up <laughs> to do very tedious work book wise I made it to I think like 50 something percent um, I hope I can finish it today although given the schedule that I have for today in terms of um, my full-time work and my freelance work it doesn't look like I can get to it um, hopefully hopefully I can I really want to finish this before I leave for my beach trip on Sunday so I want to finish this Saturday tops I have a reading sprint with um, my friend Pam uh, by the time this posted that sprint would have been over but we did it every week um, so for this week we're sprinting over at her channel um, that's gonna be on Saturday night so maybe I will read during that time, but I'm thinking I want to edit during that time. I don't know. We'll see. I have my trusty coffee here. Hello, <laughs> I don't know when I last dated, but I am currently 69% of the way through. I'm at page 
307 of Defending Jacob and honestly, I'm really loving it. I'm at the court. Um, they're already trying the case at court and it's one of my favorite sort of scenes in the um, TV series even though it only went for like maybe an episode or an episode and a half. But so far, I'm really loving it. Um, it's pretty much the same as the TV show except for a couple of like timing stuff like when some reveals happen um honestly i think the tv show did a good job at packaging it into like an eight episode or like seven episode um tv show so it's not dragging or anything um everything was just paced really well and i'm actually gonna be going live with pam from pam's shenanigans we're gonna be doing a sprint right now um well not right now um at eight o'clock it's currently 7:35. So I'm gonna um, hop into the studio, like the backstage of the sprint in like 10 minutes. And I'm really excited because I wanna finish this book. Like I have like a hundred or something pages left and I think I could really go for it because I'm actually, I'm not sure if you can see, but I'm packing right now because I'm going to La Union later. <laughs> like I'm leaving at 1 a.m. because La Union is like what, five hours away from here um, via car. So my friends, like my best friends and I were um, going to the beach at La Union and just hanging out. I only took like half day leaves next week. So we're gonna be working by the beach and all. So it's gonna be a fun time, just really relaxing. Um, and chilling out. I'm super excited for that. One of the reasons why I want to finish this book today in this sprint be is because I'm actually going to start a new vlog. <laughs> of course that vlog is going to come out after this one but I guess should I say what it is? Mm, maybe I should say what it is so I get motivated to actually film it and edit it fast. So I'm gonna be doing a romance readathon by the beach so I have three romance books that I'm reading. They're all in my um, Kindle right now. I have them from the library so I'm gonna be reading those books hopefully from Sunday, which is tomorrow, until Wednesday which is when we go back here in Manila. So yeah, that's the goal. Three books, three romance books um, and reading them by the beach. So that's gonna be a vibe. So I'm super excited for that and yeah, um, right now I'm just, you know, getting everything set up for the stream and I will see you in the next update. Hi, so I'm actually still currently um, on the reading screen with um, Pam. And um, I'm 73% away in the book, page 324. And the whole like, the, the, the thing that happened I don't want to spoil it, but basically, there was a bombshell drop during the court proceedings. And for some reason, I didn't expect it to happen right there and there. I knew that it was going to happen at some point because it was in the TV show. And the book does follow the TV show quite religiously. But I was shocked. Like, I wish I was filming that part, but I was really shocked. Um, I had, I like highlighted the part where it was said there and I don't know I think that just sort of speaks to the writing that even though I know what's going to happen I'm sort of incredibly immersed at the scene that I forget what's gonna happen before you know it's too late and now actually I'm finding out some information that was not in the um, in the TV show so it's kind of exciting to see the small nuggets that were dropped from the show or like insinuated but not explicitly like shown in the TV show and I don't know I'm just really enjoying my time here I definitely think I'm gonna finish it um, because we're gonna be sprinting until 10 p.m. right now let me pull this up so I am on stream with Pam from Pam Shenanigans and then we have like two minutes left of our sprint so yeah um, I'm gonna start like filming more while I'm reading because I think I'm gonna miss some moments because I'm starting to see some you know new things happening so yeah oh my gosh I was really shocked I was really shocked if you know you know
Kaigun was there as well. So I'm proud enough to pull a mole up all. I think so I'm proud enough to pull a mole up all. everyone <laughs> this is me checking in we just finished our sprint and i actually just finished reading defending jacob by william landy and i really liked it <laughs> my right after reading it star rating is four stars that could change depending on the criteria that i have um so i like review it based on this thing i follow um book roses uh, i forgot the name of the method but i follow her method I really enjoyed it. The ending, the ending kind of shocked me a little bit because I didn't know that they were gonna go that way. In the TV show, they they did a little bit of an open-ended thing, so you're not um. It, the the book and the TV show are pretty much like same, but there are just a couple of differences in terms of when things are introduced and of course the book is a little bit more detailed especially with the backstories and everything because you know it has more space to do that but the biggest difference I think was the um, the moment when Andrew Barber the dad sort of started to have that like doubt about um, his son's innocence that moment and the ending so those are two big key moments that the tv show sort of altered i think they re did a really good job in changing it so that it's a lot more impactful and it makes you think a lot more about the what if in the book you only get one perspective right? i think i mentioned this in a different clip where you just have the perspective of Andrew Barber. It seems like you're in his head or he's telling you the story like directly. So you don't really know what's going on in the other people's like minds, especially when they're not with um, Andy. But for the TV show, you get to follow the different characters. So you kind of see the, the progression of each character and how this case affects them especially like the mom the dad and jacob himself and you can kind of sort of you have this like feeling you know sort of what's going on but honestly i was blindsided by what happened in the um tv show ending i did not know that it was gonna go in that direction i knew that something i'm trying to not spoil it i knew that someone is going to snap but i didn't know that it was gonna happen that way yes yeah, so right now i'm just gonna finish packing and i will catch you later but defending jacob watch it read it i think um it's a really good show